taking a look at uh, completing the square when our a value is 1. So if we take a look at our function here, we have x squared plus 8x plus 10. The number that is multiplying the x squared is actually a 1. We don't have to show the 1 because 1 times x squared is just x squared. But that is our a value when we're looking at the standard form of a quadratic. So the a value here is 1 for this problem. The example the book gives works just fine, but I'm going to show a slightly different method. So if you read through this, you can see that they take their x squared, then they take their 8x's and divide them up over here and here, and then they figure out how many of these will fit inside, which is what they did right here, and then figure out how many are different, and that's where they get that number right there. I'm going to go about this slightly differently. So again, looking at the same equation, y equals x squared plus 8x plus 10, I'm going to look only at these two right here. So I have my x squared, and I have 8x's. So if we are going to be creating a square, I want to figure out how many x's go on each side. So could I have this broken up here and have 6 and 2? Does that work? Hopefully you answered no, because that is not a square. That is going to be a rectangle. So the only way that I can create a square, since I'm completing the square, is by using 4 on each side. Now, when I look at this, I have an x on this side, and I have an x on this side. That's how I got my x squared. Each of these pieces right here is a side length of x here and 1. So the whole side length right here is going to be 4. Same thing right there. So I am now creating a square that has x plus 4. So I have my x squared, I have my 8x's, 4 of them here and 4 of them there. But to complete this square, I now need to add some pieces here. And how many pieces do I add there? Well, that answer then is going to be 4 times 4, so I'm adding 16. So I have just completed my square by adding 16. This is now a square. However, I cannot just add pieces without um, keeping this balanced. So in order to balance that, if this right here is my square, in order to balance it, I need to subtract away the same number that I just added because adding 16 and subtracting 16 equals 0. Now one last piece that I need to still include is this 10. That is just going to go on the end over there. I have not used anything with that yet, so I just add the 10 on the end. I now have the parts right here in parentheses. That is my square. It is an x plus 4 square, and combining like terms, I get minus 6. When you look now at the last problem that they were talking about, they gave you the exact same answer. x plus 4 quantity squared minus 6, a slightly different way of looking at it. I'm going to go through one more example here doing the same process that I just talked about. So again, I'm going to look at just these. That negative 3, I'm going to keep off to the side. So I have an x squared 
which means I have side lengths of x and x. I also then have six x's, so how many x's need to go on each side? Hopefully you're saying three of them. So now my square that I'm creating is going to be an x square or x plus 3 square. So as we can see here though I need to actually complete the square. So how many do I need to complete my square? Well 3 times 3 is a positive 9. So my square that I just made is now an x squared from this plus six x's from these three and these three plus my nine to complete my square. That's my square. I need to subtract away that same nine that I added because these two now equal zero and I have not changed the problem. And then I want to remember that I started off with a negative 3 right here, so I want to minus 3. My square now, this set of parentheses, is an x plus 3 square. And then combining like terms, minus 12. From there I can figure out my vertex, and I can graph it.